Now, who am I? The apprenticeship must be completed before it's too late. Give it back! You... You are not ready. So make me ready. You risk everything. You understand nothing. You care for nothing. Then you've taught me well. I cannot teach one who will not learn. I cannot teach one who still will not be himself. I'm sick of your riddles. I'm sick of your rules, old man. You've never given me anything. You've never given me anything. I gave you the chance. You didn't! I gave you a chance to be anything. But first, you must want nothing. You must learn to become Don't nothing. Say it! Nothing! No, you're nothing! Oh. Master? No! No! A visitor. A customer? No, a new face, but familiar. All the same, perhaps they came to change their face here once before. Yes, long ago when the shop bell still rang. All gone. Yes. Shh. We are so fragmented. All together now. Pardon our dust. We are not used to visitors, but you are welcome. To the mask maker's shop. Somewhere amid the dust, an ancient and powerful mask is calling to you. See yourself. Synchronize with the mirror. The mirror! Find the master's mask. Face yourself. Face the truth. Do they know who they're supposed to find the Master's Mask? It restores What's happening to them. At last. There. Watch. Once, there was an old mask maker, the last master of a magical trade, owner of a renowned mask shop. Every year, his masks would transform the town. Children could play the monster beneath the bed. Lovers could discover themselves and each other. The old could be young and new, and the young could even seem wise. All only for a night at carnival time. But amid the revels, the mask maker was alone. He feared that he would take his secret knowledge, the three ancient laws of carnival, with him to the grave. For fashions change, 
and humans find ever new ways to change themselves. And few wanted to learn the old secrets of paint and pasteboard. But hope wears all kinds of faces. One day, a boy with no name arrived at the shop. A boy from the streets come looking to steal anything that would fit in his pockets or his mouth. A boy from a hard world who had already worn many masks. The old man offered him a choice. Return to the streets, pockets empty, or stay and learn the craft of masks. The boy saw his chance. The old man saw a clean slate, a pure heart, who could become a great mask maker. Has spoken. Still broken. Not ready. A white pawn. All the other pieces are missing. Chess was the only recreation we permitted ourselves during the long days in the shop. Many pieces of our memory are misplaced since he changed the rules. You will find pieces of our memory along your quest. You can already tell there is much more to this shop than meets the eye. Explore. Find the hidden door. Find the riddle. They are not ready. We must trust. The workshop awaits them. They move near the workshop. Perhaps they can feel it. Can they feel it? What happened here? Maker's workshop is a dangerous place. Tread carefully. such powerful magic. Breathe it in. The paints, the paste, the wood. Perhaps you will be able to get rid of the mice. First you need to find a plan or design for your mask. A blueprint. A first taste of your new power. Each blueprint like this allows you. Now we need raw materials. From this, you can create a new self. 
Yes. Now, trust the tools. The mask is there, within the wood. You must find it. Good. Let the chisel guide you. That sound. It has been too long. Excellent work. Now put the carving in its own special place on the main workbench. The Mask of the Islands. To wear it, you must be open. You must defy isolation. There, by adding paint, feathers, shells, and so on, this one base You'll use this dummy head to hold masks as you work on them. Now, follow the blueprint to the letter. Generations of mask makers have learned this craft before you, step by patient step. Until he came along. Your first mask. You have the power of the craft. Wear your new face. Find your way to the mask maker's realm. You must rebuild. Heal the land. The realm needs you. I can almost hear the sound of the waves. Awake! Awake! A new face. At a familiar mask. What are you, I wonder? Raw materials. That's what? After all, every master needs his. <coughs> Welcome, apprentice. I am King Prospero. You must be looking for me. Has my fame spread so far? I am janitor, landlord, and supreme monarch of this humble realm. Yes, look around. It is beautiful, is it not? Uh, a little misty today, perhaps, but that is not so unusual in the far feather islands. Well, first lesson. Masks are the gateway to this place. If you take off that crude first attempt from your face, you will return to the workshop. Try taking off the mask now, and then come straight back. They return. Shh! They have met the king. For now, they must move forward on their own. Good. There you are. Feels good, eh? <laughs> you will frequently return to the workshop to make new masks in order to move through my world. Now, onwards, let's start our journey. Go to the bridge. Whoops, try not to break anything. I've just got the place the way I like it. Still and quiet. Ah, I admit these islands have a certain tumble-down charm. Now, are you feeling watched. Do you see that figure on the next island over? Do not worry. My subjects will not hurt you. In fact, he wears the next mask you must craft. You will need to take a closer look at the mask. Did you spot an old spyglass in the workshop? They're back. They're looking for the spyglass. The spyglass, the gift of seeing and being unseen. This is a crucial tool for a mask maker. Ah, oh, you have found my faithful old spyglass. 
Keep that close. You will need it. A mask maker sees much more than they reveal. Now, hold your breath for a second. A blueprint. Now, that is a sight I've not seen since. <laughs> The, the blueprint is your guide to make a new mask and to help you remember the different designs. See, this has the same base mask as the one you wear now, but with two of those white clasp shells on the top. And you will find the components for your mask somewhere around here. Well, foraging for components is a vital part of an apprentice's training. Once you have found a new component for your masks, like this white glass shell, it will appear back in the workshop, ready for you to craft new masks and explore new areas. You only need to find a component once, and then the workshop will always have a ready supply. Uh, such is the magic of the mask maker. <laughs> You're welcome. A new blueprint. How long has it been? The base is already there for you. On the bench, near the paint. Now, craft a new mask, starting from a plain one. The first one will only be useful to come back to your first location. Wear the mask. Learn the truth about yourself, but do not trust your eyes and ears. There you are. That was, uh, fast. <laughs> well, how does that new body feel? No others are easily obtained. Oh, don't look so surprised. How do you think you entered this realm in the first place? Look back over at where you arrived. You may see the body you were wearing before. The strings cut. First, view them with your spyglass. Then, Make their mask, and you can borrow into any of my subjects. It was awfully convenient when I first arrived. These days, it's the only way to get around. Now, find my next subject and possess it. You'll find these elders' statues spread across the realm, just relics of the old ways. Ignore anything you see or... Here, when near them, keep your mind on your apprenticeship. People of this land used to cultivate shell pearls in that cave. You may find treasure lurking. Good. What a magnificent white glass pearl. Another component found. This is the start of a long journey of usefulness to your king. Can you see what this one wears? Use the spyglass controls to zoom in. This is the mask of the Far Feather Merchants, great traders and travelers. See, the mask requires two different components from different lands within my realm. Now your apprenticeship truly begins. The masks will grow more complex as you proceed. Forage for components and find 
my subjects, wherever they have been left. Craft their masks, mask yourself wisely, and borrow into them to move through the world. Once this realm had another ruler, old, jealous, and unwilling to share. But now it is mine, and I grant you passage through it. Follow my gestures. Come to the tower. Your power is growing. What was that? Something strange just happened. Oh, the statue is awakened. Or maybe you are able to enter the towers then. Yes. Hurry. Go find the three fragments of the ancient master's mask. They're scattered in the towers. Bring them to me and my castle. And with that raw material, we shall design a new mask fit for a true master. Together, of course. Use the lever to lower the panels of the map. It's time you saw the entire realm. Well done! Now you can reach different areas throughout the realm. New blueprints, new designs. You are ready for the next stage. Disappears, a new land to explore. The Mask of the Swamps. To wear it, you must be proud, love thyself, but do not allow vanity to take root. Ah, already your power is growing, but beware the King's envy. The Burlab Swamp, home to some of the rarest components, the most secret masks. Watch your footing, and don't breathe in too deep. It was so beautiful here once, but a foulness has taken root here, somehow. Twisted roots from the flint briar tree, poisonous of course. But they're also used for medicines as well as masks. See the basket at his feet. This one wears the mask of a gatherer. The roots on the top of his mask are there to scare predators which once lurked in the swamps. A simple but
Another new body to test out. As you see, the power of the Mask Maker is very useful. A king must survey his realm, after all. Especially since I first retreated to my castle and the bridges began to crumble, their bodies to grow still. I've seen this basket before. Anyway, this will come in handy. That building there, that looks promising. My swamp dwelling subjects the inhabitants of these swamps were masters at creating dyes and medicines from the noxious effluvia of the swamp. They even traded with the people of the forest above. But their time is long past. A shoot of iron grass, essential for masks of the forest and swamp. And it adds a, a little note of freshness besides. <laughs> They harvested the various poisonous products of the swamp for potion making. Good. Here you can mix potions. There are many recipes, but only one that helps clear a path through fungus growth. Let's get to work, potion maker. <laughs> surgeons. My old master's sickness grew slowly, so slowly, that I barely noticed. Perhaps he masked it from me out of care. Love, even. But I was not ready when the mask fell. Follow my gestures and come to the tower. Find the truth. Another of the Elder's statues, always being dormant, useless for me.
smells like a bit of a mishmash, but I think this will be effective on the fungus. Phragmites Australis. Don't be fooled. This humble reed, basis of many great designs, is also one of the most invasive and aggressive plants in the realm. Spikes of reed adorn his mask. Was this one a gatherer too? I don't remember anymore. My poor loyal subjects. It's time to expand your mask making. The masks always demand more variety. Every plain mask can also be expanded with wooden extensions to unlock new designs. A beautiful design, refined by centuries of wisdom and knowledge of the swamp. Oh, so much has been lost. A mask does not conceal. It is an open window. It reveals. It transforms. Fungal spores are the root of the problem. It's from these that the parasite spreads its tendrils. Look how it has sucked the life from this tree. There's one less fungus. A good start. Oh, what? What? The spores are regrowing. You must act quickly. Timber! <laughs> You've beaten back the parasitic growth. It was so beautiful here. And then the spores of corruption began to thrive on all that beauty. The swamp can fight against this toxic invader. Ah, oh, I feel lighter, don't you?
The king's story is incomplete. Come to the tower. Beautiful mask. This is, or was, a tower guardian. The towers are silent now, of course, but the locals always reserved the most elaborate masks for their guardians. Of course it lacks true mastery, true craftsmanship. This was a guardian of the swamps before the corruption took hold. See its mask? This is the pinnacle of the mask maker's art. The Mask of the Mountains. To wear it, you must know thyself and fight against the Shadow of Oblivion. I can feel the power. Perhaps you shall be the one to heal the realm. Ah, the Zephyr Peaks. When I first came here, the air was the clearest I had ever smelled, and the ringing of the chimes, the singing of the shepherds from mountain to mountain. Well, a king cannot play favorites, of course, and this should be a place for a clear mind, for solitude. I saw to that. The windmills still turn here mostly, but my children are helpless without instructions. You may need to patch a few things up on your journey. fabulous red heart birds migrate all across the realm, but they always manage to find the very highest, hardest to damn well reach places to nest. Oh, I remember scaling these heights during my home. A feather of the red heart bird. At least, that's what I always call them. 
my predecessor had, uh, didn't leave many clues. This windmill once moved the cable car, but looks like someone has started to repair it and left the place in disorder. Look around, there may be something to fix it. Our children never throw anything away. Success! Industry! The wheels of the world turn once more. Ah, but you have to keep holding the lever to turn the mechanism. See those feathers on the top of his mask? This one is from the village in the valley below, I think. It must have been stuck here since I don't know how long. So, you passed the chasm. I'm reasonably impressed. You have potential indeed. I'll have to keep an eye on you. What are you up to? Uh, I see. Well, fly, little kite. Here the weavers and shepherds would trade their goods with the miners from deep below, but the cave mouth has been blocked for a long time. This village used to be full with movement, life and bird song, but now silence. Perhaps they too needed purpose.
The fine mask marks this one as a tower guardian. They hold no power since the towers went dark, but once they were spread throughout the realm and always wore the most intricate masks. Crude things to a mask maker's eye, of course. Six-headed Stormberry. Well done. It's not easy to find. Usually we only find two or three heads. That's like a uh, four-leaf clover times three. Be careful, these Stormberries are not for eating. They're far too precious for mask making. When crushed, they produce a particular deep blue dye. Breathe it in. These are the highest, but also the deepest places in my realm. The kites fly to the high peaks, while the shepherd villages nestle in the valleys below. And below that, beneath the mountain. Well, we'll get to that. See those feathers? That is mountain craftsmanship, that is. the shepherds would graze their billy gruffs here. See, space for pasture is so limited that they would create these systems of bridges to rotate their flocks and allow the fields to regrow. Complicated business. Or even a king must admit. They're rather cute. But this little thing seems to have lost his flock. It's cut off by the bridge system. Oh, these herders and their bridges. But beware. Billy Gruffs are bad-tempered beasts. Stubborn as a mule, they never seem to go where they're supposed to go. I can't say I've missed these creatures since the realm grew quiet. But, oh, they're soft. Tough hair is a craftsman's dream. The shearing house. Here the herders sheared the hardy billy gruff hair for the weavers. Oh, a grimy, noisy business. But they wove everything from clothes to the kites up there in the sky. Listen to the creature bleat. Find a way to bring it home.
Customers would come to our shop looking to find themselves, but it seems no one ever really did. I remember one day a customer came to the shop, a pretty lady. She needed a mask for a wedding feast. She hoped to catch a rich husband. The master sent me to the market for blue feathers. I dodged the curses and the fists of the market men, searching. They must be blue, no others would do. I found them, and at first a bargain, but the tailors and hat makers laughed. Couldn't a child like me catch a bird for myself? So, when a shopkeeper was distracted, I did. The master turned my fistful of stolen sky into a beautiful blue bird mask for the lady. She said it made her feel like flying. The master asked why then did she want to fly into a golden cage? She never came back. A king? Oh, come to see daddy, little Billy. go in the shearing house. Oh, I always thought it was such a cruel business. Oh, no! What's happening? Maybe this is not the shearing house, but the slaughterhouse. Oh, God! What did you do, apprentice? shorn and feeling the air. Go then, find your parents, little Billy Gruff. <laughs> you have served your king well. It seems in some cases a little haircut is no bad thing. There, a lock of Billy Gruff hair. Crafted with Billy Gruff hair. Now this was a herder. No surprise. It's taking a rest. Once these shepherds would sing from mountain top to mountain top. See the decorations on its mask? It must have had the finest, clearest voice. You are in the service of the mask. The riddle is to know what the mask expects from you at the moment you wear it. There was a burial place for the Billy Graffs here. These animals were highly beloved. You will find answers at the tower. B. 
Billygruff horns. The last component we'll need. These old ones were used for strange rituals that are, thankfully, long past. Mask always asks more questions than it answers. is an imprint of the mind, of the emotions. Wear it, and it disguises you with truth. That blasted tower. When I first came to this realm, there was a power here already. Old and frightened, it clung to the past, it clung to its power, and refused to share. I am unable to enter these towers. But then, well, that's what apprentices are for. A fragment of the ancient master's mask is in that tower. Find it for me. Good. The tower allows you in. Faithful apprentice, once in there, I cannot follow. Ascend the tower for me. Find the fragment of the Master's Mask and ignore everything else. Got it? So, you're here at last. You seem to be fitting yourself to the role of apprentice. Ask yourself, are you merely doing as he wants? Or are you becoming what he wants? Hmm? Hmm. Perhaps you do have some backbone in there, somewhere. Here, we three spirits trapped in that crumbling old shop can reach back into the Mask Realm, at least a little. What you seek is at the top, the source of that last trickle of power. Climb the tower. I am waiting. What I have to show you is not easy, Apprentice, but I will not lie to you. This place is the greatest test in the world, because here you must know thyself, or risk disappearing behind the mask. There, you will no longer need to return to the workshop to choose a new mask. You can now change mask on the spot, take up a mask, and try borrowing into these two guardians to discover what you can do. Good. Now borrow into the other. Good. Now descend into the tower. So, the king likes to talk, doesn't he? can't be easy when you're inside one of his little wooden subjects. Silent and full of splinters. That's how the king likes his friends. Have no fear. They are nothing more than automata. Wood animated by the magic of the realm. 
The king thought he had cut himself off completely, but they provided a back door. So, there you are. I am Sir, Mask of the Mountains. Mine is the second secret law of Carnival. Know thyself, and fight against oblivion, lest you lose yourself in the masquerade. You met my siblings, but finally we meet. Finally we can talk of important matters. What did the king tell you about us? Nothing, I expect. He has tried to hide every part of the story behind his mask. You must remember. Remember a story you heard long ago, in a distant place, a mask shop. Remember that you are not just a wooden dummy standing where he has put you. Remember, you are more than the mask. Now, get close to me and take off my mask and you will discover the truth. So the master had his apprentice. The nameless boy grew up amid the paint pots and false faces of the mask shop. The boy learned fast, and he was gifted at the old techniques, tying feathers and mixing pigment and shaping wood. The master told the boy tales of the magical lands he had traveled through, searching for inspiration and components for his masks, bright islands, deep forests, and high peaks. The boy dreamed of exploring these places for himself, discovering things the master had missed, and always his master promised, soon, soon, and you are ready. The old master taught him the three secret laws of carnival. The three laws which keep those who would create new faces from becoming lost in masquerade. Firstly, you must love thyself and deny vanity. Second, know thyself to escape oblivion. And third, be open and tolerant to defy isolation. But. It seemed that for every wondrous story of the mask maker's craft, there was another rule the boy had to learn. Another rule that showed he was still not yet ready. The mask maker kept his secrets. He would not allow the boy to read his ancient blueprints handed down from mask maker to mask maker. And the boy could never enter the master's secret workshop where he created his finest masks. For it is dangerous to make new faces when you do not yet know your own. Frustrated with rules and riddles, the boy would run away pockets full, searching for what lay beneath his own mask. Now you begin to see. The mask begins to slip. Now it is up to you. We three feeble ghosts are trapped in the shop, weak and fragmented, where we were first broken apart. Only in these three ancient towers can we enter the mask realm, where the king's power is the weakest, and speak to you as we once were. Reach the other two towers. Speak to my siblings. Learn the truth. And do not trust the king. You can take off your mask to come back to the workshop now. You're not a prisoner of the tower anymore. You have our trust. Take off your mask to come back to the workshop now.
Ah, the brackish but surprisingly edible sun kelp. Used in fertility rites, believe it or not. This part of my realm has seen better days. Once my subjects kept every corner, spick and span, but they were always moving, always changing beneath my hands. I only needed them to be still a moment so I could work. Now, well, the realm's so quiet, but at least things stay where I put them. The town guardian. Time has not been kind. How long has it been since I last ventured from my castle? is a performance, and it expects you to play along. You must know what your mask needs you to be. If I remember rightly, this village is known for having magnificent sea grove corals inside the houses of its people. They use them as charms to avoid storms and give thanks for blessings from the sea. They were traders, too. The sea is a generous master, but like a king, it can be too generous. They led simple lives here. Now they're all in my castle, grateful for my protection. I was trying my luck shoe shining on the streets. But the poor folk were too poor, and the rich too clean. One day a family passed, all dressed in furs and silks, and beneath the fancy cloaks, mud soaked shoes. <laughs> but when I called out to them to offer them a shine, they drubbed me for my trouble and called me insolent. People wear all kinds of masks. A fine sea growth coral. Rather wasted in this simple cottage, wouldn't you say? It would look perfect on one of my dozen metal pieces. Honor my posture, know thyself. This is the guardian of the archipelago tower. What's he doing here? He always stood by the entrance, day and night, silently, mockingly. How did he get to this side of the island? The last one, guardian of my tower, guardian of the archipelago.
Here the people crafted fishing boats, and the legends say even larger vessels to explore beyond the horizon. <laughs> legends, of course. These people are disincapable of exploration, not without a king. Well, a boat is a useful thing, I suppose, but there's been no wind here in many years. I fear you've wasted your efforts once again. What's that sound? Where is that wind coming from? I've not felt it stir since I don't know when. Truly, the realm is responding to your touch, my apprentice. It draws you to the towers. Perhaps the kingdom senses my great design and urges you forward to find all three ancient fragments. But don't forget, you're in my realm. Yes, I know all about the whispering voices trapped in the towers. I can't stop you hearing them, but perhaps it suits me for now. Do you hear me, ancient ghosts? My realm! I took this kingdom from you once, and I will do it again. And you, apprentice, do not forget that we have a deal. I will keep it, even if you don't. Learn what you can from them. I will make use of it, one way or another. I am weakened. And it is too early for you. Meet my siblings. They will help you restore my power. Hmm. At least that's an elder statue in its right condition. How did you learn to do that? To switch masks outside the workshop? You are a quick study indeed. I can tell. I'm going to have to keep my eye on you. The most precious ingredient the swamp has to offer. This fragile lily crown flower. It seems that such beauty can only thrive here in this hostile environment. Remind you. Another fragment of the Ancient Master's Mask is in that tower. Find it for me. Once we have the three Ancient Master's Mask pieces, they will form the base for a new Grand Royal Mask for me. 
Uh, and perhaps one day for you. But tread carefully. Maybe a merciless trap lies somewhere. Face to face at last, or near enough. <laughs> I am Mei Yo, Mask of the Swamps. Mine is the first secret law of Carnival. Be proud, love thyself, but do not allow vanity to take root, lest you lose yourself in the masquerade. Uh, you have met my sibling, sir, already? Now. Imagine being trapped in an old shop with him for longer than you can count as the world moves on outside and the shadows lengthen. In any case, you have seen how the story began. Now, it is time you learned how the beginning came to an end. Get close to me, take off my mask, and you will discover the truth. Frustrated with rules and riddles, the boy would run away pockets full, searching for what lay beneath his own mask. But the boy always returned to the shop, to the promise of learning the craft, the power to change and yet not be changed. So, you've returned once again, apprentice, the master would say. Did you find what you were looking for beneath your mask? Are you ready to create masks instead of hiding behind them? But the boy would say nothing. But try as he might, and change as he did, the boy and the old man were masked from each other. Not this year, and not the next, as the boy grew up amid the masks and flattering aristocrats flocked to buy the master's wares, the boy struggled at his best and wondered when he would be allowed to show himself. Until one night, when the boy noticed his master had left the workshop door ajar. And for the first time, the boy decided that he was ready. You know a little more, but still have to learn to complete your apprenticeship. Go and meet our older sibling, Kabalash. His power is restored, and you can finally reach his tower. It's time to introduce yourself to the ritual. Synchronize with our statues. Shut 
shadow of him. You are his hands, his eyes in this world. Just as you borrow the bodies of his subjects, so his shadow controls you, drives you forward. But here, you are safe from him. Now, join me. Time is short. Once, this was a simple world, made up of simple cycles and created by ancient magic. A secret place of mindfulness where mask makers' visions could blossom, where they could hone their craft on its simple wooden subjects. The realm was passed down from master to apprentice for generations of mask makers until he escaped here, remade it for his own purpose, and called himself the king. It is good to see you, my friend. I am Kabalash, and mine is the third secret law of Carnival. Be open, be tolerant, and defy isolation lest you lose yourself in the masquerade. Together, we must liberate the king from this world. The only way is for you to heal the realm, complete the apprenticeship, and become the mask maker. Let's go deeper inside the mask and prepare you for the grand ritual. A ritual the king has never seen. It is a little early for you, granted, but needs must. Open yourself. Follow my gestures. Become them. to remember deeper. I warn you, they are not happy memories. That is why they burrow so deep. But you must understand before you can face the king. Take off my mask and you will discover the truth. Until one night, tired of tests, sick of the face in the mirror, the nameless boy found the way to the master's secret workshop. In he crept. He found the hidden blueprints. So, this is what the old man had been hiding. This is what the boy was unready for. Why, he had all the answers already. So many different faces to choose from that the old man had kept all to himself. But most important, he found the master's mask. Handed down from mask maker to mask maker. He had already seen the old master wearing it in the shop. But how many secrets could one so simple old piece of wood hold? When he saw himself in the workshop's mirror, he was transported inside the master's mask. He discovered a whole world full of inspiration. The boy began to explore in secret and to believe he had discovered a power the old master had never found, a freedom he had always been denied. 
was this where the boy could finally surpass the master? When the boy finally emerged, the light of dawn peeking through the shutters, the mask seemed different, reflecting the ambition and the desire of a young man who could become so much more than a simple apprentice. You have proven yourself, but you are still an apprentice. There can only be one mask maker in this realm, and the king is still on his throne. You must face him, and together you must face the truth. The Guardian still stands protecting the tower. Borrow its body and you can move forward. Welcome back, young initiate. You have new tools for your journey. As you venture deeper into the Mask Realm, the Workshop too is returning to life. New Mask bases have appeared and the Mask Maker's paintbrushes are waiting for you on the workbench, so that you can paint with precision. Young apprentices would spend months and years simply in carving base masks. But clearly, the Workshop believes you are ready for more. Or perhaps the realm has even less time than we thought. Once we tried to reach the King, to speak through the Guardians to him, but he retreated from us. He broke the bridges. He abandoned his subjects on islands and outcrops and shrank back to his castle. He does not even remember a world where he is not king. Guardian has had a long vigil guarding this tower. Borrow its body to move onward. Paint was always my favorite part. The younger ones always prefer playing with colors. <laughs> but older crafters find carving more refined. Oh, we have got to get out of this place. This is the Dapplemerk. Something is... wrong in the groves. I can feel it. I can smell it. But I cannot see it. Perhaps you can find why it grows so 
twisted, but I doubt it. I have tried many times. Did you see that? That damn bird? It stole the component we need. I should have eradicated them ages ago, if not for the feathers. The red heart nests deep within the forest. You'll need to find its nest. That's where they keep the stuff they steal. These villagers were especially entwined with their trees. For it is from here that the wood for all of my subjects first came, long ago, when new ones were still made. They traded with the swamp folk, of course, and the treasures of the forest appeared on masks all over the realm. The mask of a wood gatherer, highly skilled, they would go deep into the lower parts of the forests and swamps, seeking only ancient wood that the forest was finished. We're getting to the root of the problem here. This is the beating heart of the parasitic fungus. From here it spread to the swamp and was reaching its tendrils towards further lands. Finally, we can eradicate it. A bird hunter? Now we're getting somewhere. These would hunt red heart nests for feathers and sometimes eggs, until the heart of the parasite completely blocked the way. A hunter-gatherer. They climb trees to get the seeds. This is where the tree tappers worked. Harvesting sap from the treacle leaf tree. This is precious stuff. Drips slowly and painstakingly for years, like, like tears of blood. A joyful mask, one who lived and breathed the forest. These houses were great lookouts to observe courtship parades from all kind of wild birds. I remember sumptuous swirls of colors everywhere. Unfortunately, there's not much to observe these days. Here in the canopy is where we will find high briar seeds. A song seed from a high briar tree. I remember these were also used for music.
It is not you who creates the mask, but the mask who creates you. A notice for Carnival, Festival of the Mask Maker's Art. We would be busy for weeks beforehand, my old master and I. He would grumble about the modern masks and his three laws. But I saw him once standing in the shop door smiling. The iron bark leaf. It's also used medicinally, but uh, I don't recommend sampling it. They taste like wet flannel. are inspired by the courtship plumage of the Red Heart Birds. Remember, you do not bring the mask to your face. You put yourself into the mask.
<laughs> it seems the fungal spores each has a different growing cycle. We'll have to act quickly and use all the guardians left around. The disease at the heart of the groves is fading. I, I feel different. <laughs> well done, apprentice. I'm not sure how you did it. How did you do it? Well, I'm sure I would have figured it out sooner or later. We have reached the nest of the Red Hearts, deep within the forest. Finally, we can retrieve what we came for from that thieving bird. Understand, this is a changeling bug, camouflaged to look like eggshell. The bugs must have stolen her egg right out of the nest. Perhaps she was only stealing from them in turn. The corruption is receding. The forest could grow proud and tall. Now you have burnt out the parasite of vanity. The rest is healing. Guardian still stands sentinel over the mines. Don't let its unfriendly expression put you off. It will help you to move forward.
Blue Shard Mines. How many hours I spent down there when I first came to the Mask Realm. Delving ever deeper for ever rarer gems. But be careful. Even a king treads carefully here. Decorations on these houses, all inspired by the mine workings. Look at those symbols. It seems that they are related to the way they were taking their shifts. It looks like the gate of a great treasure house, doesn't it? And there are treasures indeed down below. Gems. Pachydiscus fossils are a common decoration for miners down here, but this one is a keeper. I've not been here in... Oh, it's been a long time. When I first came to my kingdom, I spent hours down in the deepest mines, seeking the finest gems to make the richest of masks. There's a cold and a dark down there unlike anywhere else, and I forgot myself for a time. But remember what you are about, and watch where you step. A mine worker. Note the fossilized seashells on the side, and bold color scheme for visibility. The miners' gems were prized throughout the realm for mask making. Then, when the king came, they mined gems only for him. And when the king closed the mine, well, they were closed up too, with all the other outdated machines. How does that body feel? Those minor hands. Are they knotted and gnarled from work? Or smooth as bolster? Blue shard coal. Fuel for all those steam machines. Much of the coal they mined here was fed right back into the boilers for the mine works. The rest of the realm had no need of such industry, of course, but here it was Oh, well, a little rusty, but here you go. The steam regulator seems to be the one having a nice job, but regulating the furnace is a delicate task. All these workers striving for a single goal, 
to tear these gems from the earth for their king. True loyalty. Just as a mask has an inner and outer face, it can disguise you from others, but beware, also from yourself. Furnace, the molten heart of the mines. It has been cold a long time. How long has it been? Some parts of the mine are particularly dangerous, and people made offerings as charms every time before entering, in case they could be swallowed by the depths. Did you hear that? Something growl? No. Still, perhaps discretion. Looks like a bone from a thistle bear, perhaps. Thankfully, it looks like it's from a small specimen. Extraordinary designs, even down here in the dark. And they also offer a great protection against the heat from the furnace. A mask does not conceal. It is an open window. It reveals. It transforms. Regulator worked here, managing the steam pressure for the machinery. One control releases pressure to stop overheating, the other is to maintain the heat in the furnace when you've hit the right temperature.
steam pumping through. Feel it. Whatever you did down there, whatever I did down there, is healed a, a little, at least for now. You have done something that I could not do alone, Apprentice. And you have uh, my thanks. <laughs> now, onwards. most precious resource in this part of the realm. Now you can make the mask. As the light grows, the shadow flits away. It is always there. But when we know ourselves, then that is where the shadow stays. At the edge of the light. You are in the service of the mask. The riddle is to know what the mask expects from you at the moment you wear it. Asymmetry in the mask design. In the mask realm, this is a sign of tolerance and openness to other cultures. Ah, fine mask from the Ashkan wetlands. 
wetlands once, but now a desert. The mask is an imprint of the mind, of the emotions. Wear it, and it disguises you with truth. Ashkan Desert, an older part of the realm, older even than my rule. Once this part of the realm was all shift and flow, flotsam and jetsam. There were networks of gates like these to try to shape the ever-changing flood, but when these lands came under my protection, I damned the waters at the source. It takes a king to see the big picture. I see. There, I thought I was going to see some creative problem solving, but I suppose finding the actual handle will be just fine. <laughs> you will have to open that gate to proceed, but be careful. The system is old, and I've seen workers crushed because of failures in the gate. Splinters everywhere. Welcome, Apprentice. What was once a shifting, uncertain, dangerous estuary is now settled, stable, safe. That is the power of King. Silt crystal, harvested from the brackish waters. Beautiful, perhaps? But that's a result of all the compressed sediments and impurities that the water introduces. Oh, this village. It's even more quiet than I remember. The land has become, somehow, fragile. Perhaps you opening the gates a little. Perhaps a little water recirculating would perk the place up a bit. Do you see the oasis and the giant tree on the horizon? There you'll find the means to bring a little water back to the land. Just a little, but keep it controlled, keep it safe. I command it. The water was filtered through the lower part of the system, then flowed to the other side and out to the river. But there should be water first. See, the mask encrusted with silt crystal. This was the gate watcher, I believe, who surveyed all across the waterways. The filter guard, in charge of keeping water flowing without blockages. See the strange fossils on the mask?
They're like a maze, these waterways. Can you see your fellow worker, the filter guard, below you? Troglomo shells. These fossils began to appear after the waters receded. The realm is ancient indeed. I wonder if these ancient creatures wore masks. You're making progress. And is it my imagination or does the land feel a little more lively already? Yes! Oh! No! It seems there's not enough water upstream or something. It was dangerous work down here. Unexpected surges could wash you away, and the impurities in the water caused malaise. Two workers would work in tandem, one down below and another supervising above. Out! You just go from strength to strength, don't you? Whoops! You're not hurt? That, that, that wasn't me, I swear. Well, in any case, it seems you won't be able to return to the maze. The snake was the spiritual guardian of this place until it fell under my protection, and they had no need of such things. 
However, you will need snake fangs in order to proceed. The snake idol was decorated with real snake fangs. Rebuild the idol, and perhaps you will find some. This snake looks a little messy, don't you think? Rebuild the idol. The pieces are scattered. Perhaps it will help you find some snake fangs. River snake. Don't touch the point. The mask of a snake tamer. See, the snake fangs on the ears, and the mesmerizing pattern. Once, the skills of the snake tamers were in demand all across the realm. There have been great civilizations that rose without the wheel, but all cultures find ways to mask their members. Take care where you step, apprentice. These sands are full of venomous snakes. The snake tamers lived apart from the community, but as you can see, they didn't lack for company, if you like snakes. That body you're wearing can withstand a bite or two, but don't push it. 
You'll need to tame this snake. Snake Tamer, bewitching melody apprentice. I'm charmed as well. Water is at your command. Where will you send it? Water must return to the river. running into my veins again. I never thought you could do that, apprentice. Something is shifting in the kingdom. A kind of life is returning that I have not felt in a very long time. I will not forget this, apprentice. Thank you. Now, onwards. We still have a journey ahead of us. rarest component in this land, but with an unfortunate name, the Queen of the Marsh. Well, these were wetlands once, remember? Imagine, inside these tents, 
snake tamers, dancing snakes, and workers celebrating all together the spirits of the Delta at winter solstice. Bills. Huh. However many my old master managed to pay, there would always be more. Then the demands. Then the men would come and frighten the master and laugh at the masks. Once I ran away and followed them, but they laughed at me too. Life returns. You have opened the floodgates, escaped isolation. And perhaps, with your help, so too can the king. You have done very well indeed, Apprentice. You have earned a king's gratitude. But, uh, a king's gratitude must have limits. When the land changes, when it responds to another's touch, perhaps the kingdom is readying itself for a new master. Perhaps that was your plan. But I am not finished. I'm still here! You are a worthy one, Apprentice. There is no doubt. Now, come back to the towers. Maybe those bitter old ghosts trapped in there can help you one last time to fix the Master's mask. Then you will be rewarded. Hurry to my castle. I am anxious to see your true face. You have traveled through the six lands of the realm, crafted all masks, and brought healing and balance. Now, join us for the grand ritual. in order to heal what the king, up in his high castle, allowed to die. But as you know now, nothing can be done alone. The towers communicate. The towers are one. Self-knowledge, 
balance. Now we have a chance. You are here at last. You are here with us. You are ready, apprentice. This is the Mask Maker's grand ritual. The last step of apprenticeship. You have proven yourself, for the true Mask Maker does not create masks to conceal themselves, nor simply to become what they wish they were. They must reveal themselves, and to reveal we must perform a dance together. A dance of masks. Through us, you will lose yourself to find what you can become. Synchronize with us to unify the fragments of the ancient mask. Let us move as one. Let us be one. What is broken can be mended. Let us see if you are a mask maker after all. Every move starts with a heartbeat, until it becomes rhythm, until it becomes dance. The ritual has spoken. 
You are close to being a mask maker. Finally, the shards of the old master's mask, our mask, are united. Now you must remember. Remember a story from long ago in a distant place. A mask maker's workshop. Remember that night. And so, night after night, the boy crept into the workshop, took the master's mask and escaped into a world where his imagination could free him from the workshop, from the master, from himself. At last, the mask. Take the mask. Take it. It is your right. At first, the old master thought the boy was gone. Gone. But then he stirred, and the master knew that he was merely reckless, insolent, definitely unteachable. Give it back! He had tried to teach him. He had. But in his life, the old master had traveled far and wide, seeking his magical components, and yet had hardly left his workshop. He only knew what a mask maker must be. He did not know what a child needs. He did not try to learn. He had failed the boy, and the boy had failed him. And now they stood, unmasked to each other. The boy had proven he was not ready, and yet the master knew that he kept the wrong secrets. In that moment, each hated the other, as they had come to hate the face in the mirror. No, you're nothing! Master? You're nothing. No. Nothing. No! Nothing. It is over. Escape. Where no one can hurt you anymore. Some part of the boy flees out of the shop, out into the street, as he always had before. But some nameless part of him hides deeper still in the realm he had discovered. A wooden world in need of a wooden king, where he could stay petrified and invulnerable. Now you know the truth, and more important, you know the story. You are an apprentice no longer. At carnival time we can all choose who we want to be, and you can be the mask maker now, if you choose it. If you face the king, if you face my mistakes, and his, and yours, you can save him, save the realm. But you must face the reflection that lies in the castle. Be sure you are finished in the realm. I do not know if you will be able to return to the workshop once you enter the castle. The castle is closer than it seems for the Mask Maker. Being a mask maker is not about making masks for yourself, believe me, apprentice. But by making masks for others, you can find their truths, and perhaps catch a glimpse of some of your own.
The entrance to the castle is where your apprenticeship began. The same riddle will get you somewhere else. Go! Your time is now! We are with you! We always were! What is broken can be mended! There you are. Have you come to claim my kingdom? Are you a usurper? A rival? Or a face in a mirror? No. I do not want to see. I do not want to remember. I do not want that face anymore. But you are here. And you healed the realm for me, my apprentice. You didn't come here for my throne, did you? You think you know what I have done, what I have been? Just because you saw it through a pair of eye holes? Or have you been behind the mask with me all along? But I'm not ready to leave. It's not exactly cozy, is it? Lonely even. Is that what you think I feel? A king is never alone. You'll see, there's plenty of room for your dreams and ambitions. Something is sure. Since you're there, I feel warmer, more embodied. First, you must remove the ancient master's mask you're now wearing. This time you will remain here, don't worry. I stopped changing faces long ago, after I'd forgotten what lay underneath. No more riddles! Now, you are free to design. Mix the paints, and use the components you have found along your way. This mask must truly represent you. Free yourself. Free us. You're the creator now. Be who you must. Horns of a billy graph. <laughs> ah, it smells of mountain air. Too many choices of who to be, eh? That was always my problem. Are you happy with this mask? If so, come to the balcony, see the world we help to heal. But be careful once you leave the workbench, you can't make any changes. This mask must truly represent you, to get you both home. I 
Finally, you made it. This magic is all you. You have reached behind the mask. You are Prospero, the new mask maker. It took you a long time to find this place deep within. Finish your apprenticeship at last, and bring back the piece of yourself that was trapped here. At last, the apprenticeship is finished. No more haunted voice in your head. Now you have healed the realm. You have given yourself a chance. A chance I never gave you. It is time to close the door on your past, on this world. The realm will survive, have no fear. Now they finally see you with your true face. You are their ruler no longer. Because each of them is a part of you. In truth, they never needed a king, only a craftsman. Leave your master's mask behind. You will not need it here anymore. Yes, free at last. Let go, Prospero. Let go. Mask maker. Welcome home, old friend. The kingdom is at peace, and you faced your reflection, made yourself whole. All that you've learned will remain here, in your heart, and in this room. But outside, the real world is waiting. Prospero! Open up your shop! Have you returned? We need hands! No one knew why the mask maker suddenly returned to the town. His shop restocked with mysterious smells, fabulous dyes, and dazzling designs, both new and old. It was said the mask maker's craft could reveal your deepest hopes, uh, whether you wanted it to or not. As though in his life he had studied all the faces of humanity and known them all. But. Humans find never new ways to change themselves, and his masks mostly allowed people to become what they wished, or what they thought they wanted, and all only for a night at carnival time. <laughs>